In this video, we are going to cover MobX, which is a fun, and I do mean fun, and simple, simple, simple way to put a data layer to your React application. Because after all, React really shines the brightest when it is nothing really more than a functional reactive UI slash view layer to all the data in the state of your application, which lives outside of React. So MobX plus React, and you basically have a framework. Uh, and it's extremely simple, again, extremely fun to use. The work that it takes to get started with something like Redux or Relay or even Flux is sometimes daunting and unnecessary. I didn't realize just how unnecessary it was until learning MobX. So we're just going to have fun with this. Here's what we have going on so far is we're just rendering a to-do list component. And that to-do list component is just saying MobX. That's all that's going on. Now, to work with MobX, you're going to need two Babel transformers. Well, you won't need them. You can do it without them, but it's a lot easier and much more enjoyable. And that's Decorators, which is called Decorators Legacy, since the spec is potentially still in flux. Uh, but it's safe to use a transformer, no problem. And then you'll want to do transform class properties as well. You'll also want to be using React 15 or newer. Uh, so let's go ahead and install MobX and MobX React. So those are installing, and once those are done, I can just do npm start again to get my hot reloading back up and going. Okay, that's running. My application is hot reloading again. So I have MobX installed. Let's go ahead and start around with our actual data layer so we can have some fun with this. I'm going to go to main.js and just start importing that. Let's import store from to do store. So you can see we have main.js to-do list JS, which is our actual to-do list component, and the to-do store. I'm going to go ahead and close that now to give us a little bit more screen space. And let's go ahead and open up this to-do store and have some fun with MobX. The one thing we need to import to get started is observable from MobX. Now, if we were going to go the simplest, not necessarily the most stable, but the simplest route with data, we do an object literal. We do something like store equals. And then we'd say, oh, we've got our to-dos. Our to-dos are an array. And then we might do create to-do. This is what we did back in the day, right? So we'd have this create to-do method that would push something onto the to-do state. We couldn't really react to it from the UI. We couldn't really notice when changes happened. We had to build all that in manually. But it sure was a simple way to code out a store. Uh, with MobX, we basically get to code in the same manner. We just get all those reactive functional features and it's much more enjoyable and much more powerful. So we're basically going to make a class. There's class to do store and we can go to do's equals that except for we're simply going to make them observable. And let's say we also want to have a filter so we can filter these to do's again observable. And there's no filter on there right now. Let's go ahead and punch in some to do's. Let's say we're going to get milk. We're going to buy milk and we're going to buy eggs. Two things we're going to buy. Very important to have. Um, and then let's say when you actually require this, it exports a to-do store. So var to do var store equals new to-do store. And that's what we're going to export as defaults. And then I did it this way so I can actually expose it as window.store as well and play around with it in the terminal. Completely unnecessary except for debugging. So now store is available here in the terminal. And if I want to see that my changes are actually reacting, I want to import auto run. This is something we're just going to do for messing around and debugging here. But I can do auto run and give it a function. And then this will run whenever the store changes. So I can console log, uh, let's see, store.filter. And I can also console log store.todos zero. So this will run the first time because it changed. We have no filter, which is right there. <laughs> I know some people with no filter. Anyway, and then we can also buy milk. And you remember I exposed store to window.store, so I can actually change this and we'll see that auto run fire. Let's say store filter equals milk. Only things that say milk. Ah, now my filter has changed and store to do zero is still buy milk. Well, let's change the to do. Equals buy cheese. We're going to go with a different dairy product. There we go. Now it reloaded. The filter is milk. And store to do zero is buy cheese. If I were just to look at store dot to do's, 
it's not just an array, it's an observable array. When you change things, it's actually firing off all these change events. Or if I were to look at store to do's, I'm sorry, store filter, you can see that it looks like it's just a simple string. How are they firing off all those change events? They're using getters and setters. So you can look up ES6 getters and setters if you wanna learn more about the technology behind MobX. Now, for those of you who are familiar with React, you're probably already thinking in your mind, oh my goodness, I see how this works. I simply, instead of doing an auto run, have React render whenever something changes. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and get rid of this auto run here. And we're gonna automatically update when things change. So let's just pass this in as a prop. And that's there. And let's go to our to-do list here. And then all we have to do in order to be able to work with this is we just need to bring in from MobX React Observer. And then we just add the Observer Decorator to our component. Now that we've added that Observer Decorator, we can go ahead and print any values straight here in our render method of our component. So I can go this.props.store to do's zero. Let's look at to do zero. And there we go, buy milk. Hmm, what if I wanna change that? Remember, I'm still setting store as Windows Store, so I can play around with that here. Store to do zero equals get milk. There we go, it automatically changed. Beautiful, let's change it again. Get cheese, change that dairy product, excellent. So instantly, we have this extremely simple data layer working to where we can just change stuff and our React UI layer will automatically change to reflect the changes in our state. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and build out a really simple to-do list with filtering and clearing anything that's checked. It will only take a few minutes to build out an entire to-do list.